Good evening and welcome to our eighth grade graduation service. We wish that we could be doing this in person right now, but obviously under the circumstances we cannot. And so we're excited to bring you our virtual graduation ceremony. We pray that as we continue to move forward, that you stay safe. And we also want to thank you for your continued partnership in the education of your child. Eighth grade students, we're so excited to be a part of your graduation today. We are honored to have been a part of your middle school career, supporting you academically, emotionally, and spiritually. We wish you God's richest blessings in the future. We've now come to the portion of our service where we will hear a message from God's word. Not only do we offer an excellent education in everything that we do here at Divine Savior Academy, but everything is rooted in God's word. Because of that, we want to meditate on a portion of scripture tonight and to lead us through that, Pastor Caleb Schmigi will do that now. Congratulations, eighth grade graduates. Uh, you made it. We made it through this, the, the strangest year yet of our education. But not just congratulations, eighth grade graduates, congratulations, parents, you did it. Teachers, you made it through this strange, strange year. And that's good. I, I'm glad that we're, we're done. <laughs> we can all breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief. Did any of you plan this? Did you plan to end the year like this? When you brought in all your supplies into your, your eighth grade homerooms, Weren't you expecting to, to walk out on the last day with all that stuff? When you started your, your year in your homeroom, you, you didn't expect to end it in your living room or in your bedroom. We didn't plan for this. But you know what's interesting? God knew this was going to happen. He, he knew that as you started your eighth grade year, you had all sorts of plans and ideas about what this last year of middle school would have. God knew that it was not going to be the same as what you planned. He knew exactly what it was going to be like, that it would end like this. And so I think the words that we have today from Jeremiah 29, 11 are incredibly applicable to our situation right now. When things don't go according to our plans, when they don't go according to what we think our future will look like, a passage like this is incredibly comforting. God tells us this in Jeremiah 29, uh, 11, the passage you chose for your graduation. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. God has a plan for your life and for my life. And the one thing I want you to think about today from this passage, the one thing I want you to think about is that it's his plan not mine. It's his plan, not yours. And that's a good thing. God does have a plan for your life, but it's not going to be the same as your plan or my plan. You know, when we hear these words that, that God has a plan for my life, maybe what we envision, what we hope for, is what we see in uh, Drake's music video for his song, God's Plan. We envision, you know, somebody dropping stacks of cash into our laps or, or getting to dance with Drake and Antonio Brown or, you know, where he shows up with a giant check or something. We think, yeah, God's plan is going to be unexpected and it's going to be amazing. But I think, you know, it's not going to be like that. Like, that's not what regular life looks like. And that's probably not what God's plan for my life or for your life looks like. But the comforting thing about this passage is that he does have a plan for, for your life, and it's his plan. I want to give you a few reasons why that's a really, really good thing, that it's his plan and not your plan. First of all, God's way smarter than we are, right? Like parents, teachers, you've had more life experience, and you, you know that all the plans that you make and all the things that you expect to do, they're not always the smartest thing. You probably have lots of memories of your life when you had made plans and they were not smart. Not all of our plans are the best thing for us. And so that's why it's incredibly awesome to know that God has smarter, wiser plans for our lives than we do. But not only a, a better plan, but also a plan that's, that's filled with love. I mean, think about this. Not only is God's plan smarter and wiser, it's actually gonna be the best thing for us. 
like a loving parent that, that doesn't just give their child everything that they ask for, but, but gives them what's best for them. That's how God looks at our lives. And, and when we look at Jesus, the, the place where we see what God is really like, we see how much, just how much God loves us. Right? That he was willing to sacrifice himself to save us, willing to sacrifice himself so that he could show us how much he loves us. It's that same God that has a plan for your life. A God who loves you so, so much has a plan for you. And it's his plan. And the other good thing about the fact that God has his plan for your life is that he, he has bigger and better goals for my life than I do. Like so much of the way I look at life, I'm so focused on like the here and now, the stuff that's right in front of me. And the good thing that I know is that God, when he's making a plan for my life, is he's thinking about things that I'm not thinking about. He's thinking about bigger and better goals for me. More than just success or money or people to like me or for me to be able to relax a little bit. God has plans to make me more patient to make me more emotionally mature. Plans that, that, not just, that don't just make me popular in the eyes of others, but plans that make me closer with him. He's got bigger goals than I do, and for that, I'm thankful. I'm thankful that God doesn't just give me whatever I want, but he's gonna give me what's best for me. Aker, did you remember talking about this in class? We were talking about prayer this year. You can probably remember that, hopefully, remember that prayer acronym we had, P-R-A-Y. And in our prayers, we would praise God, repent of our sins, ask him for things. And then the last one, yield, or, or you first, or your will be done. That attitude that says, God, if I'm asking for something that's not good for me, don't give it to me. God, if I'm asking for something in my plans for my life that you don't think is the best thing for me, do what you want instead, please. Because God, I know that your plans for me are, are better than my plans for me. That's what we know about God's plan for our lives. It's, it's, it's the, the same motivation that we have when we pray, your will be done. It's a motivation of knowing that God is bigger and better and more loving and wiser than, than we are. And so if he has a plan for our lives, it's, it's better. In fact, in fact, I think it means that if God has a plan for our lives, it naturally has to be different from my plan. Otherwise, I'm God, right? So when our plans don't go the way that we want, that's a reminder that, that maybe this is a God thing. In fact, I have a little bit of a, a warning for you. That when God wants us to grow or mature or learn, he's not going to do it by making things easy. Parents, teachers, even students, right? You can attest to this, that when you have matured, when you have grown, it hasn't usually happened when everything's super easy. It's often happened when things are difficult, when things are hard. Like when we mature, it's because we face something that's higher than our current maturity level. When we grow emotionally, it's because we have to, to face a depth of emotion or a sharpness of emotion that we haven't had to deal with before. And in that way, we grow emotionally. We grow spiritually, not just when things are easy, but when in the face of adversity, we have to cling to God and his promises when things aren't going well. And so friends, when, when things aren't going well, when they aren't going according to your plans, just remember that God does have a plan for your life. He knows the plans he has for you. Plans to give you hope and a future. And eighth graders, I, I have so many hopes and dreams for you. It was awesome getting to know you guys more closely this year. I have so many hopes and dreams and prayers for you guys. But, but the thing that makes me feel okay about not being able to control all of that for you is to know that there is one who is smarter and more loving than I am. And he does have a plan for your life. And he's going to help you grow. As you go into high school, as you face new challenges, he's going to help you grow. He's going to put difficult things in your life. But it's his plan. It's a good plan. 
plan to give you hope and a future. Right, let's close with the prayer. Heavenly Father, things don't always go according to our plans and that really frustrates us sometimes. Uh, help us to trust you. Help us to remember that you have a good plan for our lives, especially when things don't go according to our plans. Help us to trust you. Help us to go to your word early and often. Help us to go to you in prayer. And ultimately, God, we just ask that you do what's best. We ask that you carry out your plan for us. And help us as, as you do that to trust in you. In your name we pray. Amen. Next, we have a quick message from our eighth grade class speaker, Marcella Arneson. Hi, fellow students and teachers. Thank you so much for choosing me as your eighth grade representative. I am very excited to give this speech in August. Thank you. We have now come to the portion of the ceremony where we will honor our eighth grade graduates. They have completed the necessary requirements to move on from middle school into high school. To read off their names, I welcome up Ms. Leite, Mr. Kerbis, and Mr. Hemling. Good evening. I'm Ms. Leite, the 8A homeroom teacher. This year has been such a blessing for me, getting to teach all of the eighth graders and especially having the 8A homeroom. I've really loved the devotions we've shared every morning and the time we've had to connect. At this time, I will be reading the names of the 8A graduates. Marcella Arneson. Estefania Boasef, Juan Cavallin, Sebastian Cordero, Claire Davison, Ali Dominguez. Adolfo Flores Kilcate, Nicole Fulci, Emma Gangora, Paula Hernandez, Luciana Jimenez. Eduardo Leal da Silva, Vanessa Leva, Amelia Luque, Juan Pablo Marinas Ramos, Vitalio Marinucci. Alejandro Merlano, Sophia Mueller, Du Nishimura, Rebecca Oyarse, Dariana Padron. Maria Garcia Lovato, Abril Romero, Alvaro Sainz, Sabrina Thompson, Alexandra Vasquez. Those were all of our 8A graduates. You will now be hearing from Mr. Curvis, the 8B homeroom teacher. Good evening, my name is Mr. Curvis, and I have the privilege of serving as the 8B homeroom teacher. It is truly our pleasure to be able to be the homeroom teachers of the middle school students of Divine Savior Academy, and we truly hope and pray that you and your families are doing well. I will now be reading the names of the 8B graduates of the 2020 8th grade class. Valeria Arias. 
Federico Briseño Murillo. Nicolás Cadena. Franco Congawala. Baldo Cardona. Daniel Corrente. Santiago De Andrade. Natalia Dos Santos. Victoria Esquivia Acosta. Estefania Franco. Maria Angel Goncalves. Natalia Gonzalez. Rosario Gonzalez Frias. Victoria Jordan. Isabella Lanza. Eduardo Luciani. Rafael Mejias. Valentina Noriega. Joe Nunez. Giovanni Parillo. Irene Rubero. Maria Valeria Scudero. Marcos Telly. Kylie Troji. Sofia Valbuena. Sofia Zaken. This concludes the 8B homeroom. I will now introduce Mr. Hemling, the 8C homeroom teacher. Good evening. My name is Mr. Hemling, and I am the 8C homeroom teacher. It has been my privilege to see your children, the 8th graders, and especially my homeroom, grow and experience their lives of faith as they witness to their Savior in their 8th grade school year. I will now read the names of the 8C homeroom class. Camila Alvarez. Gabriela Alvarez. Lucia Aragon. Sofia Barkin. Carlos Benitez. Andrew Corti. Simon Fainboy. Natalia Frey. Lauren Gutierrez. Allison Harry. Oliver Herrero. Joaquin Kunzendorf. Alain Laferriere.
Michael Mata. Alex Mitchell. Marianne Morales. Nicholas Padilla. Sarah Pack. Marisabel Quiros. Nathan Renfer. Avril Rodriguez. Sofia Saladino. George Saye. Andrea Ujoa. Polina Vamande. Camilo Yanguas. This concludes our 8C homeroom. Next, we will honor two of our graduates with a special award that we award to students each year. I will read the name of each award, followed by the description, and then who the recipient of that award is. The first award is the Citizenship Award. The Citizenship Award is given to the student who shows consistent academic excellence throughout the year, demonstrates a positive Christian attitude, and is involved in extracurricular activities. The eighth grade recipient of the Citizenship Award is Sophia Mueller. Next is the Principal's Award. The Principal's Award is an award that is given to one graduate in the middle school. The award is given in recognition of middle school academic excellence and an exemplary Christian attitude. The recipient of the Principal's Award is Juan Cavallin. This concludes our eighth grade graduation ceremony. We thank you for your continued partnership in the education of your child here at Divine Savior Academy. We wish you God's blessings and we look forward to seeing you in August. Your children have prepared something for you and so please enjoy the following videos. Thank you to all of the teachers that I've had over the last nine years here at DSA and to my parents for giving me a really good education. I feel very grateful and I'm very lucky to go to the school. Thank you, mom, dad, and teachers for supporting me throughout these years. I have, like, I'm so honored to have you guys in my life, and thank you. I just want to say thank you to my parents and my teachers for giving me the best education possible. I don't know what I'd do without you guys. Thank you, parents and teachers from DSA who have given me such a great education. I'm very grateful for all that you have done for me. Thank you, parents and teachers, for giving me this education that I have. I am, know that I am very lucky to have this education because not every child is fortunate enough to have this opportunity. Thank you. Um, thanks, uh, mom and dad, for everything you've done. Without you, I wouldn't like, like most of my homework, I would have forgotten to do. I would have gone to a lot of late homework. And thank you, teachers, because without you, I wouldn't have gotten this amazing education that I have. Thanks. Hi, mom. Hi, dad. Hi everyone who taught me in the past two years. I just wanted to say thank you for all the effort and the work you put into getting me a good education. Bye. Thank you to all my parents and my teachers for my education. Thank you for everything you have done for me and I truly appreciate you. Hi teachers, thank you for all the time that you put in effort um, for teaching me and thank you mom for always supporting me. Uh, during my education and same for you dad. Thanks. Bye Thank you mom and dad and thank to all the teachers for the best 10 years of my life And I cannot wait to finish the last four with all of you Thank you mom and dad teachers for everything you have contributed for my education. I truly appreciate it I appreciate that the teachers are always motivating us to do our best and to also 
help us to succeed in our class. Thank you, Mom and Dad and my teachers for everything you have done to contribute in my education, and I really appreciate that. I want to thank my mom and dad for contributing in my education, and I also want to thank my teachers for helping me and made me succeed. Thank you, mom and dad, and teachers for taking part of my education and helping me out through all these years. I appreciate it a lot. I just wanted to thank all the teachers and for my parents to put me in a great school where we can learn about God. Thank you to my parents and teachers for all you've contributed to my education. I truly appreciate you. I would like to thank my parents for allowing me to go to this school and allowing me to receive this education. And I would like to thank my teachers for taking the time to teach me every day. Thank you to my teachers and my parents for my education. Hey, my name is Camilo. I thank my, my teachers for teaching me during this middle school time and my parents for investing their money as well and working hard for me. Thank you. I want to say thank you to my parents and my teachers for providing me with such a good education and for giving me such a great life. Mom and Dad, thank you for putting all your money into my education and letting me learn and try new things. And I want to thank all of my teachers of all the things they've taught me throughout middle school. I want to say thank you to all the teachers that have helped me and supported me throughout the years and a big thank you to my parents who have always been super supportive and never left my side. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you to my parents and my teachers for giving me such a great education. My teachers and parents, um, thank you for everything you guys have done for us. Thank you for your time, for your energy. Thank you for everything. I just want to thank my parents for giving me an amazing life. And I also want to thank my teachers that I've had throughout being at DSA for teaching me everything that they know. And I'm really thankful for you guys.